Hey, thank you for checking out this video on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. My name is Gwen. I'm a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. And the following is taken from a live stream that I did with Kevin Oliver, a machine learning engineer at the Octavian Group. Kevin has extensive experience with Bicep, which is an infrastructure as code tool for Microsoft Azure. And we're about to dive into a conversation on Bicep, tooling, parameter files, loops, and a bunch more tips and tricks that he's picked up along his way working with Bicep. The link to the entire live stream will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Let's dive right in. For those who haven't used a Bicep config file before, um, it is a set of linting rules that allow you to uh, control what um, how your code can work. And uh, a linter for those who haven't used it before is a static code analysis tool where you can set up rules around certain things that can or can't happen with inside of your code. So in this case, I'm just gonna do control spacebar and check out what properties we have available here. And I'm gonna set up a rule for no parameter, no unused parameters, or set this to a level of warning. We're gonna do the same thing for our variables. And then look at this IntelliSense. I mean, just by a few clicks, you know, control space bar, I can see what yeah, values are awesome. available to me. <laughs> you know, if I need to check out what available what values are here, all the different values are available to me. So I know these are my options. I don't have to go out to the documentation. I don't have to go and hunt down with somebody what the value should be for this. Um, they make it all available to you from the IDE. So you don't have to go anywhere to check anything else. Um, one other rule that I really like to add to is um, there we go. No hardcore locations. This is one I like to have. I don't want anybody to ever set up a hardcoded location where they're putting things. Um, with this created, and this was just created at the root of our um, project. If I go back here and I change our location to be central US, now I've got a red squiggly. My bicep config file is already picked up and it's telling me that I can't statically set this value here. I have to pass in a variable with the value for where it's going to go to. If I was trying if I was to try to do this deployment now, it would actually fail and give me an error mm -hmm. saying that um, this oh. we're gonna terminate that I have, I have other errors that are gonna fail it right now um, you try to actually deploy this with the error in it it would fail out as well so we're gonna back to location we're gonna jump back into our virtual network module and do our update there as well and we're going to do the same thing here, just updating some parameters and getting them into a little bit more of a um, best practice standard for how I like to set mine up. Um, a lot of people to set their parameters and their variables and their resources together in groups. And I guess that's more of like a personal preference. You know, do you want to keep all of the related pieces together or do you want to group them together by the type? Um, you know, again, this comes back to the idea of making sure that you set a standard with you within your team or if you're working yourself so that whenever you create new files, they're all created the same way. And it'll save you a lot of troubleshooting as to later on as to what's going on and uh, where different resources are and uh, how things should just be created. And do the update on our virtual network here. All right. Look at this. This is significantly different than the, uh, the mm -hmm. previous virtual network that we were deploying. So if we look at some of our parameters, so we're passing in our subnet our array of subnets is going to have all the information that we're going to use to deploy our virtual network. Uh, we have the address prefix for the um, virtual network itself. 
um, and we have the DNS information that's going to get passed in as well. So right off the bat, um, as you can see, we're going to be doing a loop to deploy all of our subnets. So if you haven't used loops in uh, BICEP before, essentially at any of the different properties that allow you to do um, that allow you to pass in arrays, you can use loops to deploy multiple resources at the same time. So what this is telling us is that for every object in the subnet of a, in our subnet array, we're going to go ahead and apply the value for all these properties. If we let me know if that's too small. I think that's good. So if we look at our, our properties here, we are creating our name based off the name value. We're applying our subnet prefix. And then for some of our other optional properties here, we're actually using a special function called contains. This is checking that subnet array to see if a value for service endpoint exists. If it does, it's going to go ahead and apply that value here. If not, it's just going to give it a blank value. And this really is um, a nice way to add flexibility with inside of your modules. Uh, each deployment it may not be the same. Maybe I have a deployment that doesn't need service endpoints and one that does. By configuring our virtual network resource this way, we're able to allow it to be used across multiple different deployments without having to create special deployments each time for the specific properties that are being set during that deployment. Um, if we look at if we look at our parameter file one more time, even even in the subnets we're deploying. We have a private endpoint network policy in one. Um, but if we were to add uh, a private link, this private link service policy here into our second, it would still deploy as part of our deployment because it's going to go ahead and check to see whether it exists or not. And it's got a default value if it doesn't. So it really makes it easy to uh, expand and modify your code or modify your deployments. Mm -hmm. So just like that, now I've got two different subnets are being deployed with two different sets of properties, and uh, it still will work. I don't have to do any modification to my BICEP file, um, and then anyone else can do the same thing. Uh, now, there's a lot of properties that I don't have set here as well. Um, as you start to add those properties in as part of your deployment, um, you can expand the BICEP file here, and that's where you should. That's the only time you should really be doing that expansion is when you have a new deployment that needs a new property added in here. So you're providing a way for uh, technicians or users to pass in a value or so that it has a default value. Um, again, we see that here with our DHCP options. We're passing in DNS server, or we're passing in values for the DNS servers. Um, if we don't pass in a value, we're going to set it's it to null. null. Mm -hmm. And this is a special one, a little bit of a special one, because we had to set the, the um, expected shape of the values beforehand. Um, we aren't able to do it during. Uh, in this DHCP section, mm -hmm. um, so I create a variable to handle that. So at the top, your only parameter is essentially the array of like the subnet, right? You're you're not individually having to call like subnet IP range or anything like that, or subnet one name, cool. subnet two, right? Exactly. For all the subnet information, that's all just one array is being passed that's, in. So that's and one parameter ha holds all of that, essentially. Yes, and exactly. Instead it. of having to have all of them. And you could Very even cool. get more complex with this and say everything in an environment, you could have an environment array that just has all of the different uh, resource values there for it as well. Um, uh, there's some good, ex good examples on GitHub um, for... Uh, uh, really complex deployments where you're they're actually deploying like whole subscriptions with mm -hmm. just a parameter file and all the deployment pieces into it. Have you ran into any issues with that approach? So far, no. Um, one of the big issues that I know I've run into with some things is uh, nested for loops. So sometimes you run mm -hmm. into resources where you have an array of res array of, uh array of properties, and then there's going to be another set of properties in, underneath that. You can't nest for loops inside of a BICEP, and uh, not yet. Uh, hopefully, that will be something that they'll be able to fix in the future. I know it's been brought up before on community calls and such. Um, but to get around that, sometimes you may have to create another module to act like that loop and get the, the values you want, and then pass that into the um, the array below it. So that uh, that's another thing that actually we hopefully we'll be able to show in uh, the next session. Mm -hmm. um, 
but for here we are just going to go in make sure this is up to date and uh verify everything looks good okay